In this video, you're going to learn how to work with parametric equations, and we're going to go through five examples together. We're going to talk about how to graph parametric equations as well as eliminate the parameter and write it in the rectangular or xy form. So let's dive into this video. I'll show you some tips and techniques for uh, working with these problems a little bit easier. The first example, we've got these two equations, x and y, and notice that they're in terms of a third variable, in this case t, which is called the parameter. Now you might think of t as like time, or it could represent something else, but basically what happens is we're modeling this horizontal motion or this x direction in terms of t or time, and then we're modeling this vertical uh, motion uh, in terms of t or time. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a table and we're going to look at what does this graph actually look like. So we're going to pick some values for t. In this case, I'm just going to pick a couple negative values, zero, and a couple positive values. Now, sometimes you have to be careful to watch out for any restrictions on that parameter. You might not be able to put negative numbers in there or, you know, et cetera. So be careful for that. But let's go ahead and put negative two in for, for t. Negative two plus two is zero. If we put negative one in for t, negative one plus two gives us one. 0 plus 2 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, and 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay, now let's go to our y equation. Putting in these t values again, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, minus 1 is negative 5. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, minus 1 is negative 3. 2 times 0 is 0, minus 1 is negative 1. Uh, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on just these x, y coordinates now, and we're going to plot these as points on our graph. Okay, so we've got 0, negative 5, which is right here. We've got 1, negative 3, which is right here. Uh, 2, negative 1, right here. Uh, 3, 1, and uh, 4, 3, which is right here. Okay, now what we're going to do is notice that there's Basically, this is like a line, right? So it's going right through these points, okay? But I'm not going to put arrows on the end of the line, okay? And this is very important when you graph parametric equations. What you want to do is you want to show the orientation or the direction that, say, for example, this particle is traveling with increasing values of t or increasing values of time. So you can see as t is getting larger, where were we headed? We were headed from this point to this point to this point like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw arrows along the direction that this particle or object is traveling with increasing values of t or time. So again, don't put arrows on the end, just show the direction that it's heading with increasing values of t. Now the second thing we want to talk about is how do we write this in rectangular form or xy form, eliminating the parameter, eliminating this t. What you can do is, let's go ahead and rearrange this equation by subtracting uh, 2 from both sides. So that's going to give us t is equal to x minus 2. All I did was subtract 2 from both sides to get t by itself. Now we know what t is equal to. Let's go ahead and put that in for t in the second equation. So that's going to give us y equals 2 times the quantity x minus 2 minus 1. So if we simplify by distributing, we've got 2x minus 4 minus 1. Combined like terms, we have y equals 2x minus 5. Now you might say, Mario, that makes a lot of sense because the y-intercept is negative 5, the slope is 2, so you rise 2, run 1, rise 2, run 1, etc. This is the equation of a line. The only thing that we're missing when it's in rectangular form is we're missing the orientation or the direction that this object is traveling with increasing values of t or time. So this was kind of a simple example. Let's look at some other ones that you're likely to encounter. Let me erase the whiteboard and let's do the next example. Okay, if you want to pause the video and try this ex second example on your own, go ahead and, of course, we'll go through it together. We've got these two equations, again, in terms of our parameter t, but what we want to do is we want to get a good sketch of this graph, and then we want to eliminate the parameter and write it in rectangular form or xy form. So to do that, uh, let's go ahead and plug in some values here for t, and I usually just pick, you know, a couple negative, zero, a couple positive. Again, sometimes you have to watch out for restrictions on the domain. But in this case, when I put negative 2 in, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. For the second equation, when I put negative 2 in, negative 2 squared is 4 times a half is 2. Remember to do your order of operations, uh, your parentheses, exponents, then multiplication. Negative 1 squared is 1 times a half is 
a half. Zero squared is zero times a half is zero. One squared is one times a half is a half. And two squared is four times a half is two. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna graph these xy coordinates in our xy plane here. And let's see what that looks like. So we've got negative four, positive two is right here. A negative two, a half, which is right about here. A zero, zero at the origin. Uh, uh, let's see, we've got oh, two comma a half, which is right about here. And then we've got four comma two. Three, four, two, right about here. So now I'm gonna graph this graph. Again, remember, don't put arrows on the end of the graph. Kind of looks like we have a parabola here, but notice what's happening. As t is getting bigger, right, I went from this point to this point to this point to this point. So you can see I'm heading this direction. So we're gonna put some arrows to indicate, you know, the orientation or the direction that this particle is traveling with increasing values of time. The other thing I forgot to mention in the first example is that what's interesting is you also know the location of the particle at a given point in time. So after two seconds, you say, oh, where's my particle? It's gonna be right here. You know, where was it one second ago or negative one if you're going, going back, let's say, you know, you're over here. So it's a, a way of locating because you can have two graphs that are intersecting or crossing, but are they crossing at the same moment in time? And that could be a very important uh, thing to know when you're doing uh, some of these problems. So that's our graph. Now, as far as rewriting it in the rectangular form, we have to eliminate the parameter t, right? So the way to do this is, let's go ahead and divide both sides by two. So that would be uh, x divided by two is equal to t. So now I know what t is. Let me go ahead and put that in place of t in the second equation. That's gonna give us y equals one half x divided by two squared. Uh, let's see, that's x squared over four. Uh, times one half, which gives us x squared over eight, or we could write it as y equals one eighth x squared. And you can see that's you know, the equation of a parabola. Again, the only thing that we're missing with the rectangular form is this another layer of depth or uh, detail, I guess you could say, about where this particle is and the direction that the particle is traveling. So let's dive into another example. Let me erase the whiteboard, we'll do number three. Okay, for number three, this is interesting because now we're switching from our parameter of t to a parameter of theta. So theta is like our angle. And so now again, we've got two equations in terms of, uh, in terms of our parameter theta, x and y. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick some values for our angle theta. I'm gonna use radians. Uh, so we put in zero here, cosine of zero is one. Remember your unit circle. That's the x coordinate on your unit circle. That would be one times six is six. The cosine of pi over two is zero times six is zero. Uh, cosine of pi, that's negative one, times six is negative six. Uh, cosine of three pi over two is zero, times six is zero. And the cosine of two pi, that's back to one, times six is six. Now, over here for the second equation, the sine of zero is zero, times three is zero. The sine of pi over two is one, times three is three. The sine of pi is zero, times three is zero. The sine of three pi over two is negative one, times three is negative three. And the sine of two pi is zero times three is zero. Now, if you need help reviewing the unit circle, you can check out some of my videos, you know, my Myers Math Tutoring YouTube channel where I can show you more about that. But basically, you, you wanna go to the unit circle, cosine of the x coordinates of the points, and sine are gonna be the y coordinates of those points on that unit circle. Now, we're gonna plot these points. So six comma zero, four, five, six is right here and zero comma three is right here, and negative six comma zero is right here, and zero negative three is right here, and we're back to six comma zero right here. Now notice, with increasing values of theta, the particle is going from here to here to here to here to here. It's going counterclockwise. So look at what kind of graph that we're getting here. What does that look like? If you set an ellipse, you're absolutely right, okay? So, but notice the direction, it's traveling this way. So we're gonna put arrows to show the direction with increasing values of theta, and that's our graph. Now, if we wanna eliminate the parameter, this theta, how do we do that? Now, the first time I learned this, my mind was like uh, really expanded by this. You wanna go back to your Pythagorean uh, trig identities. Remember cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one? Remember that one? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for cosine. So I'm gonna divide both sides of this equation by six. So that's gonna be 
cosine of theta is equal to x over 6. Same thing here, I'm going to divide both sides by 3, we get sine of theta is equal to y divided by 3. Now, when I go to substitute this in here, see how cosine theta, this is cosine squared theta, I'm going to have to square both sides of the equation. So cosine squared equals x squared over 36. See how I'm squaring both sides? Over here, sine squared theta, this is sine theta, I have to square both sides. So that's going to be y squared over 9 is equal to 1. And you probably recognize this now as the standard form of the equation of an ellipse, right? You've got your x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. Again, the only thing that's different between this form and these two parametric equations is we're missing the detail of the orientation and the location of the particle for a given value of theta. So pretty neat. Let's take a look at two more examples. Uh, let's get into number four. Okay, this is an interesting example because we have to pay attention to the restrictions on our parameter t. And we can see here we've got the square root. We can't take the square root of negative numbers without getting imaginary numbers. So that's going to restrict us here on what we can put in for t. We're going to have to pick values like 0 or greater. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick values for t of 0, a 1, 4, and 9. Now why am I picking those numbers? Because they're easy to take the square root of. It's going to be easy to, to uh, solve this. Now, Let's go ahead and put the t in for, or 0 in for t. That's going to give us negative 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 4 minus 1 is 3. And 9 minus 1 is 8. Over here, the square root of 0 is 0. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 9 is 3. So let's go ahead and plot these xy coordinates in our xy plane. This is going to be right here, negative 1, 0. 0, 1. Uh, 3, 2 and 8, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 3 would be right about here. Okay, so our graph you can see is going like this. And notice that with increasing values of t, we're going from this point to this point, etc. So we're heading this direction. So we'll put some arrows to indicate the orientation or the direction. And that's our graph. Now if we want to eliminate the parameter, what do we do? Well, we're going to solve for t by adding 1 to both sides. So we could say x plus 1 is equal to t. And then since we know what t is, let's go ahead and substitute that in place of t in the second equation. That's going to give us y equals the square root of x plus 1. And you can see that, yes, this does look like a square root equation. If you understand transformations, you can see that this plus 1 is going to shift the graph left 1. Sometimes the students uh, mistake that students make is they say, well, oh, this kind of looks like a line. Let me draw like a line and let me have it continue to go here to the left. But remember, we had these restrictions on t that didn't allow us to take the square root of negative values. So this graph just starts at this point and it goes this direction, but not the other direction. So that's important uh, to recognize any restrictions on t. Let's take a look at one last example together. For this last example, I just want to focus on eliminating the parameter. This is another problem that you might see involving the parameter theta. And notice that these are in terms of uh, secant and tangent here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use another Pythagorean trig identity. You probably remember this one. It's uh, 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. So what we're going to want to do to eliminate the parameter is let's go ahead and solve these equations in terms of secant theta for the top one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 2 and then I'm going to divide by 3 to get the secant theta by itself. So divide both sides by 3. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this quantity, x minus 2 over 3, I'm going to put it in place of secant. But notice that this is squared because this is secant squared here, this is only secant over here. Now to solve for tangent in the second parametric equation, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So y plus 3 equals 4 tangent theta. And I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And now I'm going to replace tangent theta here with y plus 3 over 4. But notice that this is squared, so we're going to have to square this quantity. Now if we simplify a little bit, we're going to get, <clears throat> I'm going to leave the numerator uh, in parentheses, y plus 3 squared over 4 squared, which is 16. Okay, uh, this is 1. And then over here we have x minus 2 squared over 9. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, subtract this whole group here to the other side. So this is really going to look like x minus 2 squared over 9 minus y plus 3 squared over 16. 
as equal to one. And so what does this look like now that it's in rectangular form? Well, you can see that this is the standard form of the equation of a hyperbola. So you may see problems involving uh, tangents and secants, and you can rewrite it like this. So great job if you're able to follow all five of these examples here involving parametric equations. If you want more practice or you want to see more examples that I've done previously, I'll put a video I did right there. Go ahead and follow me there to get some more practice. You might want to try some of those on your own, and I'll see you in some of my other videos.